In this video, I'll be showing you how to compile and execute the new SafeX testnet blockchain. So as we know, a few days ago, Daniel released the testnet blockchain for everyone to have a play with, to compile and execute themselves. Now in its current form, it's not executable straight out of the box. Uh, you will need to compile it and we'll go through that process in a minute. Uh, but you can see the source code, it's written in C++ and you can find it within github.com forward slash safex forward slash safex core. And within here, you can go through the various folders with all the various features that are built into the blockchain. So these are all the individual modules that are there. Uh, there are other, other sections as well, such as being able to report issues um, and, and whatnot. And you can also create a fork of the blockchain if you as well if you want to do, but that's, that's for another video. So one of the prerequisites for being able to compile the source code is uh, you need to be in Ubuntu desktop. Um, no doubt you can compile it within Windows, uh, but for this video it's going to be the Ubuntu desktop. This is the most easiest way to do it if you have uh, no programming or uh, compiling experience. Now, for, mo for the majority of the people that are going to be watching this video, they're either in uh, Mac OS or Windows. So you'll need to create a virtual image of Ubuntu. Uh, I'm actually currently working in um, Ubuntu 80, uh, as you can see here. Let me just minimize. So I've got Ubuntu 18 running here um, as a virtual machine within uh, Oracle VM uh, VirtualBox. Now, I'm not going to show you how to create a virtual image of the operating system. Uh, I want to try and keep this video as short as possible. Uh, but there are plenty of videos out there on YouTube on how to create a virtual image of the operating system. Um, one thing that's quite important for the compiling is you need to try and allocate your virtual image as much, as many of the CPU cores as you can, and as much memory as you can as well, because uh, we have seen issues where people have got about two to four gigabytes of memory and the compile fails uh, part way through. So with this virtual image, I have roughly um, about 12 gigabytes assigned to it. Uh, that should be more than enough to do it. Um, so yeah, so let's get straight into it then. So I've already got my commands pre-written here, so I'm not having to type them all out manually. Uh, what I will do is I'll upload these codes to SafeX News, so you can cut and paste. So you can cut and paste uh, the code uh, in your own, own terminal. <coughs> So what you'll need to do is to start the terminal, and if this is a fresh install, what you'll need to do is a sudo apt get update and an upgrade. I've already done that, so I won't go through that with you. The next thing you need to do is install all of the various libraries, um, tools, etc. that you need to compile the software. So you've got git there, that's basically the tools that you need to use to pull, copy the source code from GitHub. Uh, build essentials, CMake, CMake is the, the ultimate tool which is used to compile the source code. Uh, and then you've got all your various other things, dependencies which the blockchain needs to compile. So I'm just going to copy and paste that into my terminal and run it. Put your sudo password in there. No, oh, I typed it wrong, haven't I? So I've already got those installed, so it'll go through. So, but it'll take about five minutes for you. Uh, you then need to run this next code. Again, I've already done that, but it'll just take a few minutes for this to compile. <clears throat> then, because this code here is sending you into a specific folder, you'll see that you're then in that folder. So what you don't want to do for the next bit is where you pull the SafeX code to pull it into this folder. So if you do a CD, which is change directory, it'll send you back to your root directory. Now this is the fun part. This is actually pulling the blockchain raw the raw blockchain code off github and putting a copy onto your computer now i'll just explain this so git 
clone, so that's making a clone of the uh, blockchain. Then you add a double double uh, a double dash recursive. Recursive basically pulls in all of the other external repositories which the uh, the blockchain pulls in. Uh, if you don't use recursive, it's not going to pull in the uh, the additional. Um, it's not going to pull in the additional uh, libraries and um, modules which are required. So if you run that, give it a few seconds. Now that's downloaded. If we do this command, it's ls. It's basically it, it lists all the files and folders within the particular folder the directory that you're in right now. You'll see uh, where is it? Cfx core. So that is the files that you've just copied from GitHub. Cfx core. Uh, there is actually some older versions that I've um, compiled before here. So I just I just keep them in the folder for uh, for earlier reference. So what you need to do now is to change your directory and simply do that cd safex core if you do ls again it will show you all the files that are in there there's nothing you really need to do with the actual files you don't need to make any adjustments or anything like that all you need to do now is to call the make command now if you remember earlier where we built we where we downloaded cmake um, this is the tool that's used and it pulls in all these libraries and all the things that the blockchain refer refers to and compiles it into a single executable file. So I'll just go through this little section here. So it's sudo make release j4. Now this last little bit here, this dash j4, what this basically does is it just speeds up the whole process for you. Um, it, it essentially allows you to choose how many cores you want to use when compiling the code. Now I've got an i5 and it's a four core CPU now, and this uh, virtual image is using all four of my cores and I've got plenty enough memory. Um, so if you've got a four core, you know, set it as four. But you need to make sure that you have roughly around about two gigabytes per, of memory per core. So if you don't have that much memory, use less cores. It'll take a little bit longer, but um, it it just makes sure it just makes sure that you're utilizing all the cores available to you, just to speed up the process and make sure that you're not running out of memory or anything like that. So I'm going to execute this. It takes roughly from my computer around about 20 minutes. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna record the entire process. I'll I'll stop here and I'll I'll rejoin. I'll re-record once uh, it's it's ready. But if you execute that, it will go through this whole process. And after a bit, you'll see a percentage here. And this will count all the way up to 100%. And if you've got everything running, if you've got everything already pre-installed, this should not be a problem for you. Uh, it should compile all the way up to 100% and then be ready to run. So the blockchain is compiled successfully. Um, actually, whilst I was off camera, uh, I made a bit of a rookie mistake. Um, this particular image of Ubuntu that I was using uh, actually had less memory than I suggested you used. And it hung up around about 64% because um, it was having to use a swap memory. And uh, swap memory is notoriously slow, uh, especially if it's on a mechanical drive, which this image is, is on. Um, so it just slowed down the whole process. It was still compiling, but uh, it was having memory issues. So that really emphasizes if you're compiling your own code, uh, you need a lot of memory uh, for it to uh, compile correctly. Uh, in this instance, I have about 10 gigabytes of memory. Uh, the previous version, the previous version, I only had two gigabytes, so it was just hanging up every every few minutes and then having to use a swap. So if you get to 100%, 
uh, it will obviously mean that the, the, the blockchain is compiled. So I'm just going to close these terminals and just start a new terminal so we're starting from afresh. So if you do the ls again, you'll see that suffix core. Go back into the folder, and you'll see that there's a new folder in here called build. Now this is the the compile. This is where the compiled code is going to be found. So if you go into cd build change directory list, you'll see that there is another folder called release. Uh, there are different forms of builds that you can do. Uh, we've we've done the release version. Um, I'll go into go into it in, in another video. The different types of um, builds that you can do, but for, for for what we need, it's only the release. Now, when you're in the release folder, there are still a few other things in there. But the the folder that you'll be the most interested in is bin. So if you go cd bin, you do a list directory again. You see these are the actual softwares of the actual daemons that have been compiled. So all that you did previous, this is what it's produced. Now the actual blockchain itself, the actual blockchain daemon that you need to run is this one here, it's SafeXD. So there are a few things that you need to do to make sure that it's running for, to, to get it to run first. And the first stage obviously is to execute it. So the way we do that is you do another sudo command, sudo, and it's da, dot forward slash safexd. And what's most important at this stage is that we run it under testnet conditions. So testnet. So it's double dash testnet. If you don't do that, it will try to run and it will try to connect to the main net, but there isn't a main net right now, so it will just fail. So if you run it, let me just execute, pop the password in. Now, just before this video, I just did a quick um, execution uh, to make sure everything was running fine. It is. Um, if it's the first time you run it, it will take about five minutes just to synchronize with the network, download all the blocks, and uh, update the internal database. Now, within here, there's a few different things that you can do. Um, in this instance, let's just run the help command. Let's just extend this out a little bit so you can see. So you can see all the different commands. I'm not going to go for every single one at this stage because um, it can get quite complex. Um, we will go into uh, where is it? Uh, mining. Start mining, start mining, yeah, start mining. We'll go into that in a follow-up video, so it will be a video straight after this one to just show you how to uh, do CPU mining. So now your blockchain is actually running and synchronized with the network. Let's just do a quick status. You can see net the network hash rate is 417 right now, so that's how many combined... Um, CPUs and different people with the blockchain running, and that's their combined power at the moment, uh, mining. So now we've got the actual blockchain running and synchronizing. We open up a new terminal, and what we're going to do is create a new wallet. Uh, now you need the blockchain daemon to be running and synchronized for the wallet to work, um, and you need it opened in a terminal. There is a way that you can have the the, the blockchain running in the background, so it doesn't need to be open in a terminal. I'll show you that in a minute. But again, to create a wallet and to start a wallet and to, to, to manipulate and use your wallet, you need to, first of all, go into the the, the bin library, the, the bin directory that we went into before. So it's there we go. And to execute the SafeX wallet CLI, if you're not logged into root, uh, which is not recommended, um, but in this instance it doesn't it doesn't really matter because it's not a, a live environment and the money that you produce and the SafeX coins that you're producing right now in the testnet are worthless. So um, security isn't really much of an issue. But if you were doing this in a proper live environment, I wouldn't recommend executing anything within root uh, always create it yourself your own user 
account. Um, <clears throat> so there's there's less vulnerabilities. I'm not I'm no expert on uh, Ubuntu or Linux. Um, so it's probably best to refer to uh, the, the many videos that are out there that, that show you how the best uh, best practice when it comes to running software within Linux. So to start the wallet, you're going to execute it in a very similar fashion to that we did with the um, blockchain daemon. So it's dot, actually let's start it with sudo because it will require our writing permission to do so. Safex wallet CLI. And again, it's double dash test net. Just pop my pseudo password in there. And it'll ask you to create a file name for your wallet. I'm just going to call it test net wallet. And it'll ask you if you want to create that wallet because it's the first time with that name. Yep. Give it a password. I'm just going to make something simple. Set your language. There you go. And there's your wallet. Now, with the wallet itself, if you just scroll up a little bit, there's a few things, a few important bits of information here that you need. Uh, first of all, your wallet address. Um, It'll also give you 25 words, uh, which can be used to recover access to your wallet. So make sure that you get these written down, save, and put them elsewhere. Especially so for when it's when it's an actual live environment, when you're on the main net and the, the SafeX coins and SafeX tokens that you that you're using have a real world value to them. Um, within here, obviously, there's there's different types of. Let me just expand that a little bit. Is there's two different um, balances that you'll find here. So the first balance is for your SafeX cash, and the second balance here is for your SafeX tokens. Um, so you've got balance there for oh, balance there for SafeX cash, balance there for SafeX tokens. Now just like the uh, daemon, if you type in help. There's a few things, uh, there's a few um, commands here that you can use to uh, do different things within your wallet. It's sort of like you know, check your balance, uh, check the blockchain height, what's the average fee right now, uh, generate a payment ID. We'll go into that in another video where uh, showing you how to do transactions. Uh, check the status of the wallet um, and all those kind of things. So let's just do a status. There you go, it's synchronized, it's all talking with each other. So now we have our wallet and our blockchain daemon running, synchronized, talking to each other. We're both on the they're both on the test net. The next thing to do is to start mining. And uh, I will be showing you how to do that in the next video. Thank you.